Welcome. Welcome, everyone. I'm Daphna. Uh, you probably all know that by now. I'm the Labor Education Coordinator at EWOC. And this is training. This is week four of the eighth series, Inoculation and the Boss Campaign. Um, I have a couple of quick announcements, but I'm not going to do the whole spiel again because I feel like you guys are pretty much get it and we do have a um, you know a good presentation that I don't that I want to get to so um, let's see anything um, here that I want to say um, well uh, before I get to the stuff in that <laughs> slide I'll just say a couple of things one is that there was a slight delay in updating the links from week three um, thanks Renal, if you're here, for pointing that out to us. And we did fix it. So if you want to go ahead and check out those links, the um, the links now from week three should all be updated. Um, so go check that out. And um, the second thing that I wanted to say is that we there is another training coming up that is not an EWOC training. It's a DSA training for people who want to learn about salting. If you don't know what salting it is, you will learn about that in the training, but basically it's um, when you're going into a workplace with the intention of organizing it. In other words, in other words getting hired in order to do that. Um, and so if you're interested potentially in salting in uh, you know, Starbucks or Amazon, this is a good, uh, this is a good place to go because we are looking for salters in some um, uh, in some locations. So I just put the link in the chat, and we'll also send that out afterwards in the follow-up email. The other thing we'll send out in the follow-up email, in addition to all the links that we always share, uh, is a link to for folks who are unions for resources from labor notes. If you're looking for help organizing within a unionized workplace. And then the last thing that I'll say is, uh, you know, we have, we will share at the end of the presentation breakout rooms, the links. We are rearranging the links just a little bit, mostly because of some um, behind the scenes facilitators um, issues. So we're going to, we're going to change them a little bit, but you will see some of the same people that were in your previous group. It'll be basically you and your whole group uh, joining another group. So you won't be on your own with people you don't know. Okay, next slide. <laughs> See if there's anything here. All these links will be sent to you. Next slide. Your training team, which hopefully by now you know. And we are in week four, uh, inoculation and the boss campaign. We're gonna do a little 30-minute, uh, 35-minute presentation right now with Sarah and uh, and James, who is a former Starbucks worker, who's going to be talking about the boss campaign that they faced. So um, without further ado, oh, and a reminder that we're going to go into breakouts and afterwards there will still be an optional debrief session in this room. So you can return to this room if you have any questions that weren't answered there. Did I cover it all? What's the next slide? I think so. All right. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you, Daphna. So hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Tanis. I am a social service worker and a volunteer organizer with EWOC from Denver, Colorado. We're just going to kick off the inoculation presentation by watching a quick video that Amazon actually had their workers watch as they learned that there was talk of organizing. Tristan, can you play the video? Welcome. We're excited to have you at this training, specifically designed to give you the tools that you need for success when it comes to labor organizing. During this course, we'll cover several important topics, such as our position on unions, associate rights, signs of employee disengagement, and how to identify, escalate, and address associate concerns. We are not anti-union, but we are not neutral either. We will boldly defend our direct relationship with associates as best for the associate, the business, and our shareholders. 
We do not believe unions are in the best interest of our customers, our shareholders, or most importantly, our associates. Our business model is built upon speed, innovation, and customer obsession, things that are generally not associated with unions. When we lose sight of those critical focus areas, we jeopardize everyone's job security. We don't badmouth unions in general, but we will speak openly with associates about unions, including any specific concerns about particular unions involved in organizing. And we share our preference for a direct working relationship frequently and boldly, even when no organizing activity has occurred. You will learn about the warning signs most commonly associated with early union organizing, as well as other warning signs that could indicate associate disengagement, vulnerability to organizing, or early organizing activity. While employees have the right to organize, we have a right and responsibility to share our position that a direct working relationship is better for the customer, the company, and the associate. In order to be able to do that effectively, it is critical that we recognize the early warning signs of potential organizing and escalate concerns promptly. If you see warning signs of potential organizing, notify your building HRM and GM site leader immediately. HRMs and GM site leaders should notify their assigned ER managers or ER principal immediately. The most obvious signs would include use of words associated with unions or union-led movements like living wage, or steward. Petitions or other concerted activity, such as an associate purporting to speak on behalf of his or her co-workers when raising concerns. Union graffiti, union t-shirts, hats, jackets, or other clothing, union flyers, and union visitors in or near the parking lot. Some signs are less obvious than finding the actual union flyer, but they can still indicate associate disengagement, which is itself a warning sign for potential organizing. Examples include associates who normally aren't connected to each other suddenly hanging out together. Associates who were close suddenly stop speaking to each other. Groups of associates scatter when approached by management. Increased associate negativity, anger, or confrontation. Unusual complaints or change in passion or detail around complaints. Unusual interest in policies, benefits, employee lists, or other company information. Or any other associate behavior that is out of character. For example, an associate who normally leaves promptly begins hanging out in the break room for an hour after work each day. In order to recognize warning signs, it is critical that you know what an associate's normal behavior looks like. Often, it is the change in behavior that is the warning sign, more than the actual behavior itself. Oh my god, I love watching the responses in the chat to that. Yeah, it's it's absurd. Big yikes. Um, <laughs> before we move into talking about inoculation, um, we are going to actually hear from our guest speaker, who is James from Buffalo. So James is a former Starbucks worker, a successful union drive at their workplace. James, can you quickly just tell us about the boss campaign at your Starbucks store? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, first off, I just want to say that in that video, I mean, it looks cartoonish, but like this is this is the shit that they actually say. And like, you can't drive that home enough that like, it seems hilarious, but this is actually what the companies say. And like, I, I could like attest to all of this just from Starbucks. So um, at my store and throughout Buffalo, I think, you know, Starbucks started out by saying that, you know, like, we're sorry, we want to like reiterate our commitment to the workers, you know, they didn't focus so much on there being a problem, just that, you know, we support our workers. Sometimes the company might say, you know, oh, we're so sorry, we're here to help you out, you know, let, let us make it up to you. Um, and other times the company will respond just simply by ignoring that anything is happening and just like doubling down on them being pro-worker. But in Buffalo, there was a mix of this. The biggest thing to share about here is that Starbucks flew in over 100 different corporate managers to do surveillance in our 20 stores. They played nice at first. Oh, you know, we're, we're just here to help out. And then after about a month and a half, they started some pretty severe crackdowns on rules. Union leaders started getting write-ups for minor you know, tardinesses, infractions, using foul language and dress code violations. Corporate used all of these things to create a paper trail and they started firing people at stores. And in Buffalo, 10 people have been fired so far. Um, while there's a good handful of others that are being denied transfers or being forced to quit. And alongside all of this, the company held all of these captive audience meetings that were mandatory, uh, where, you know, we were fed information kind of like, you know, what is hinted at in the video. 
um, after we started speaking up at these meetings to correct the misinformation, because they do tell flat out lies, uh, the company started having the managers do one on one conversations with us so that they could uh, have these conversations without a pro union worker being there to like correct things. And they would often like directly lie when they knew pro work, pro union people weren't weren't present. And it worked really, really well to discourage union support. Some of it didn't work really well because we inoculated so well. And I'll talk a bit more later about, you know, why um, why some of it didn't work well. Some of the like good inoculation that we did that I think tend, tends to work most places. So Thank you so much, James. We'll come back yeah, and ask you a couple more questions later so we can get more details. But um, so we're going to dive in and just kind of start off with the foundation of what exactly is inoculation. Um, when I think about inoculation, I think of a vaccination. I think about introducing a virus to the body and preparing the immune system so that when it's eventually exposed, it knows how to fight back and you don't get as sick. So just like a vaccine, inoculation is preparing your team by walking through the likely reactions and responses of the boss. To do that, you can identify the vast variety of tools, tricks, and traps that your boss will use to disorganize and divide your efforts to form a union. So in short, inoculation is the process of preparing yourself and your team for inevitable pushback so that you stay united, you're building trust, and you're responding in unison. Next slide, please. So what do we mean when we talk about inoculation? Um, we are talking about that process of preparing ourselves and our coworkers against fear, doubt, despondency, and the boss's response to our campaign. We talked a little bit about this in our breakout room last week, but it's really important that you not only talk through some of the potential ways that your boss will show up to create division, but to also act out those divisive practices with one another and role play your responses to ensure that you're all united and collective in how you approach it. Um, as you know, fear plays a major role when it comes to the obstacles and successes of organizing your workplace. So acting out the boss's campaign against your union and the way that you will respond will help you and your coworkers come together and work through that fear. Next slide, please. So why exactly do we want to inoculate? Well, inoculation is definitely super important because we know that the boss is preparing to bust the union. So we need to ensure that workers are confident, prepared, and controlling the conversation. One thing I want to emphasize is that the process of inoculating is a really important part in building trust between workers. Um, inoculation helps us maintain our vision. As we know, anti-union tactics can be distracting intentionally. And the thing is, is middle management isn't part of the union. So union busters will often use them to help their anti-union campaign. Middle management will be inoculated and told that this union is a direct attack on their management skills. So then they'll become the ears on the ground and the mouthpiece. And any other workers who are vocally anti-union will be used as well. Um, luckily for us, workers in the past and present are experiencing this and can share their stories like James's so that we can learn from them. Uh, James, I'd like to hear from you again. Uh, did you guys use inoculation and did it help your organizing? I mean, inoculation is the only reason why we've won so many um, union elections around the country. And I mean, we can't emphasize enough just how seriously you need to take inoculation because the kind of, I mean, you're in this room, everybody on this call probably isn't going to experience the kind of, the kind of fear or uncertainty or like confusion that a rank and file person who doesn't know what a union is, is going to experience when the boss starts uh, doing what they're going to do. You know, um, the biggest thing that, a company will do and the union the anti-union playbook hasn't has not changed in decades and it it's used in every single company like the, it, it's the exact same playbook from company to company to company to company to company the company or the the whoever your boss is is going to try and paint an us 
you working for us with this company and you're a part of our family, you know, you work with us, we're all family. It's us against them, them, that union, you know, that unknown organization, that like bunch of outsiders. We don't, we don't need them and they don't care about you. You know, they just want your dues. You know what we care about you. We value our direct working relationship with you because we're all family here, right? Like we, we don't need a third party coming in from the outside speaking for you, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that you need to do, I think in, in inoculating really is just to teach workers what a union is. Most rank and file people don't understand unions, uh, because like we're raised in a country that teaches us to compete against one another from like day one, that second you enter a public school or a private school or wherever it is, you know, and unions are fundamentally different in their spirit. They're about togetherness, solidarity, mutual aid, like truly trying to help one another out. So our biggest battle in inoculation conversations first was, can you describe what a union is in two sentences? Because these conversations, they have to be pithy. You can't like drag them out, you know, and these aren't like big intellectual conversations either. You know, these are just like getting the, the gist of an idea. So I would ask everybody here, uh, to to leave with one task if you haven't al already can you describe what a union is in two sentences and in two more sentences can you describe why you need a union without vilifying anybody both of these things both of these things you have to do very very positively because ultimately we need to keep the high ground we need to be creating like a positive and warm and welcoming affect for everybody because the critical thing about the boss campaign is the boss campaign doesn't even have to be good like most boss campaigns are shit. like bo like bosses are really bad at busting unions they're not like well put together but they don't need to be good because all they need to do is make people feel uncomfortable and make the whole experience as uncomfortable as possible. And if they can do that, then people will vote no. You know, they don't even have to hear that a union's bad. They'll just vote no to the discomfort. You know, so I, I speak. This this was absolutely our experience at at my store and throughout Starbucks. So awesome! Thank you, James. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So as mentioned earlier. We know that there are certain things that management will do in response to our organizing drive. One of their tricks is what we refer to as carrots. So when I think about carrots, I think about something that's like a treat or a reward. When we think about the boss responding, we often revert to thinking about like all the horrible things that they'll do. We think about people getting fired, having arguments on site, and more generally, a response stemming from anger and high emotions. Carrots are tricky because on the surface, they're pleasant. The boss might get personal, might make some promises, uh, use phrases like we're a family. I'm sure a lot of people have heard that one or throw a pizza party, which is like a very funny, very broad range. Like all of us have experienced like a pizza party being thrown. Um, and then they'll act like they understand your struggles and they'll have an open door and they may even start going as far as promoting people and, you know, tending to like smaller issues or they'll send reinforcements from up top who we call the suits. Um, so this presents like as, as if the boss cares about the workers and their struggles when in reality, carrots are offered to maintain the status quo and to distract people from the ultimate goal, which is to unionize. Next slide, please. So the other response that you'll receive from your boss is what we refer to as sticks, which is more aligned with that sort of expected angry or like threatening response. Um, unlike carrots, sticks look more like a punishment. We've seen it a ton with Starbucks. It's a great example recently where management will say things like, you know, it's not in our budget um, for us to give you raises. They'll start shifting blame on coworkers. They'll blame the union for all of the trouble that you're going through. Um, they'll start gossiping, spreading rumors, or they'll just like straight up retaliate. Um, this technique is used to get under workers' skin. It's used to create that environment of fear. And like James was saying, it doesn't have to be good. It's just that environment that they create. And then they put, you know, workers in tough positions that force them to like make decisions of the like us versus them type thing. 
Um, so like the video, you know, we saw earlier, sticks can look like that manipulative anti-union video that we saw. It can look like posters or captive audience meetings where they force workers to sit and listen to a million reasons why the union is going to make things worse for you. It's important that whether it's sticks or carrots, we see through this behavior and we recognize it as a response to workers taking control of their working in, their working conditions. When the boss's power is being threatened, it's any trick or any table that's going to be on or any trick or any treat that's going to be on the table. So they're not going to throw anything out the window. Um, before the next slide, we'll let James tell us a little bit about like the talking points of the boss and, and inoculate us a little on what we should expect. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's a, a nice little like performance that I like to do when I coach other Starbucks stores about like what their manager might say. Um, because like, this is, ex this is exactly the stuff and the, the affect that our managers have used when conveying all of their talking points. It's for them, it's really about this affect, right? It's less so about the content and more about the affect, you know? It's so, um, hey, so like, I, I'm so glad to get to sit down and talk with you today. Like, I, like we don't get to talk a lot anymore. I, I, like things are really uncomfortable in the store because of all this like union stuff that's happening. And like, I know it's really confusing. It's a really confusing time. Like so much stuff is up in the air, but like the most important thing that you need to know is that you could talk to us. Like you could talk to me, but we're, we're a family and like, we're, we're here, we're here for you. And it, it's really important in all this confusion that you get all of the facts about what's happening right now. And that's why I wanted to talk to you because, you know, uh, you need to do your own research and like, certainly, you know, like, like there's so much inf information out there, but I, I wanted to tell you directly, we want you to vote in this election and like, we, we want you to vote no for the union. You know, if, if you form a union, I'm just going to be really, really scared for you. Like, uh, we might not be able to have this conversation anymore. You might not be able to share your issues with me. You know, you're going to have to have a union representative here. And like, we can't even like talk to each other anymore. If you want to transfer stores, you might have to quit and get rehired. You know, like we just don't, we just don't know. Um, if you're interested in promotion, like the union's probably going to make all the decisions about that. And like, we, we don't know what to do here either. Um, but you know, you'll get to bargain a contract, which is that that's pretty cool. But like so much is unknown, you know, like you, you might get more with a union, but like you, you might also get less. Like we just, we just don't know. We, we really don't know. Um, and so this is a really big decision. You know, it, it's not just going to affect you. It's also going to affect your family, right? Like it's a big deal. So make sure you get the facts, do your research. And if anyone tries to talk to you about the union in the store, just be really careful. You know, like I've heard that union supporters are like super aggressive and they're making a lot of people in our store feel uncomfortable right now. I bet you could feel it, right? Just like how uncomfortable it is to come into work every day. And like, I think we should just vote no to all of that. So yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Do you have any questions? You know? <laughs> It's so good because like every time I hear somebody say like the union's going to do this, I'm like, the union is the workers. Like you're basically saying like the work, like you're going to be like the problem. <laughs> um, thank you. That's super helpful to go through that because I feel like you give the energy that <laughs> we need in order for us to like be truly inoculated. It's like so ridiculous, but um, cool. Next slide, please. Okay. So we just heard a little bit from James about how this boss campaign will look and take place. Um, some examples of how this may look are that you'll receive one-on-ones, emails, texts, and then the atmosphere at work will change. You'll have full staff meetings and almost every line of communication will be used. Um, I mean, over time, it's become super professionalized and highly predictable, making it lack creativity and giving us a chance to recognize the behavior pretty easily, which is good. Next slide, please. So how to respond. This, in my opinion, is one of the most important pieces of the inoculation process. This is why we socialize before we organize. This is why, you know, we build trust and relationships with our coworkers and why we emphasize collective action as a means to achieving our goals. 
it's important to show strength through resilience and to have that mindset that whatever it is they're doing, it's to beat us and we have to hold strong. So in that, every win is an organizing win, meaning every conversation, every relationship formed, everything new you learn, and every small win is a step toward organizing your union. This also means that directing all of your efforts and actions is toward the end goal. Um, this also means on the reverse side that, you know, every loss or attack against you is an agitation. So when your shift is cut, it's another reason to engage in collective action. Every employee laid off for being five minutes late is a reason to fight harder and to win. So just remember to not let the boss distract you from your goal. That's their whole intention. This isn't about them for once. It's about you and your union. Your audience is your coworkers. Next slide, please. So here's a fun tool that you and your coworkers can use on your own campaign. You can find this in the organizing guide. Uh, we recognize that like this whole process can be a lot and it's important to utilize humor when fighting fear. You can use this to start to like identify the tactics being used and create a fun game out of it. I mean, like fighting your boss obviously requires some pretty heavy lifting. So making it fun as often as you can by using this kind of a tool, it's not only effective, but it's, it's a good time. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, so we're going to watch a video here. In this video, it's about the, it's the Google Fiber workers who are standing up against and then shutting down a paid union buster, if it'll work, hopefully it will. Justin, do you want to share? No. Did it not work? It wasn't working on your end. We're having issues with this video because it requires like certain access. And we had it at one point, but now we don't. Yeah, it's still not working on my end. Um, okay. I'd be happy to share about a quick meeting that we had while you're trying to get it going. Like these, these meetings happen regularly at, at, at Starbucks. And one of the things that I thought I'm like really effective was... Um, you know, give give them all the time they need to speak, but like they have to be they have to be respectful, um, because if they're not respectful and they're not like the nice guy, then they they lose like their power, right? And so when you get the opportunity to ask questions, um, ask pointed questions. You know, one of the and, and do it in like a Socratic way. You know, one of the things I like to do is ask. You know, so like if we vote yes for a union, we get to bargain a contract, right? Um, okay. And, and so like before, before like that contract goes into effect, everybody at the store, we all get to vote on it. Right. Um, so I keep hearing you say like, you know, we might get more in a union contract. We might get less. Um, if we get to vote on the contract, like, are we going to vote against like against ourselves? Like, why would we vote yes on a contract that gives us less? So like, I hear you saying you might get more, you know, we, you might get less. What, what do you want for us? Because like, we want more. What, what do you want? Um, and like, yeah, like there's no, there's nothing they could respond to that with. They have to like re redirect it, you know, to some, some other thing. And then they just look silly. Right. And there, there, there are many different, there are many different like setups that you can use to kind of like walk them, uh, walk them into that, you know, so. Is that fair? So in other words, if someone, if, if, if let's say this, how many? One sec, almost there. <laughs> I can do it if you need. No, I found, I found where we dropped in the chat. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, there we go. Consider myself an entrepreneur, right? So to speak, like to run, like to be involved in business. How many of you have ever thought about wanting to have your own business one day? Possibility? Okay. So you have your own business. Um, what kind of what what kind of profit margin would you like to have in your business? Uh, it depends on what kind of service we're providing. Okay, but uh, just as an example, what, what would what would pique your interest to say? If, at least if I had that margin, it'd be worthwhile me going into. Anything? That's again going to very well. Sure, I sure. see where you're going. So, so as an example, you know, people want to have their. So everybody's got business interests. So one side's interests. You have to make sure you're you're trying to see how much your interests can align, correct? Because the one thing that will happen 
in your particular business, um, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Marco, because you're the, you're kind of the business guy on this. You're a, you're a, a third party service provider, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have so you have a so your company has a contract with Google. So Google pays you a certain amount to mm -hmm. do the services for the year. Is that correct? Yes. So whatever that let's just say let's just say that's ten dollars. Sure. Okay. So Google contract for the year is ten dollars. We have and we'll try to keep it as simple as possible. We have ten people, so we can now <coughs> afford to pay each person a dollar. Correct. Sure. That math work for you? Sure. Now we'll make you the supervisor for a second. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, 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 is, that, Irony. Is, that, is, that, is that funny? <laughs> okay. So now, so now, the only restriction I'm going to put on you as a supervisor is you've got ten dollars. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. So now, because that's all that Google's going to give you for this year. Okay. So now, the, the staff comes to you and asks you for a raise. Can you give it to them? What's your thought, yes or no? Uh, so, there's a bunch of other variables at play. A lot like, of variables, right. Like, like, like the other yeah, company giving it. another <laughs> vendor $15, or say they give them $10, and then they have a set of employees that makes, you know, way more than we do, there which is a situation that is happening right now. There are differences in those, though. You know that, because we're vendors, essentially meaning that, you know, BDS runs the business, we manage the employees. Mm -hmm. When you look at the other teams, they're temps. I, I, they can be let go at any right. time. They're, they don't and they don't have a lot of the benefits that you guys do have. Like with regards to paid time off, like health benefits, but they like do. That. If they do, it's, it's vastly more expensive. And they can, like I said, they can be here on a Monday and be let go on a Wednesday. That's not how it works with our contract. But if a job, if someone's going into a business and they know the market value of what they need to pay, certain people and they're not meeting that market value that's set there right no, no, you yeah. can't expect to have those people if the market value isn't met no, no, no. That. yeah so great example of i like what abby said these union busting cutthroats for higher mckinley and pinkerton to scum bags make my skin crawl obviously it's you know it's infuriating but it's great to see the way that people stand up for themselves collectively um cool and then tristan whenever you have a chance we can go to the next slide it's okay take your time take your time <laughs> You are on it. Thank you so much. Um, so when to inoculate? Basically any chance that you get, which includes the organizing conversation before any public action, captive audience meetings, one-on-ones, during follow-ups, et cetera. Much like agitation, inoculation will have to happen at any point in time where unity may be threatened by a response from the boss. You can go to the next slide. I'm going to rush through this end piece a little bit, but um, so the inoculation conversation will be an organizing conversation where you weave in the inoculation section. It'll follow an often like non-linear non -linear structure of the introduction, talking about the issues, agitation, plan to win, inoculation, calling the question and planning for follow up. So this you can go back and forth between all of these multiple times within an organizing conversation. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you weave in inoculation, you'll want to ask pointed but open questions like, will the boss let you take control? Or what will the boss try to do to stop you? You'll also want to detect feelings of fear, dive into those feelings, and go a little bit deeper into how that retaliation would make everyone in the workplace feel. It's important to ask how they'll respond to it to that when they do that, because then your coworkers can start to kind of game plan and prepare themselves for that response. Next slide, please. All right, folks. So before we bring, um, before we go into the breakout rooms and bring up our, you know, questions and all that jazz in there, uh, some of the core concepts today, inoculate, 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 be prepared to respond to the boss campaign. And most importantly, do not lose sight of the issue and the plan to win.